Hey, how's everybody doing there out on YouTube? Hope everybody's having a good day. I just got to very quickly go ahead and fix uh, Facebook. And this way we will both be on together. Give it a few moments and I'll be on there. It's just I have to do some technical things before I begin. hey how's everybody doing today so right now we are on Facebook and we are on YouTube at the same time I am also on live with uh, Twitter in just one second give me a moment and I'll go to Twitter so we will have the trifecta we'll have my Twitter people my Facebook people and YouTube people all together watching this pretty cool video and we are going to do the portrait Excuse me, guys. The portrait of Martin Luther King Jr. Very important person. I love Martin Luther King. Wish I could have met him. Of course, I was too young when he was alive. But definitely, this is someone great in history. And that's why I chose him. Also, I was in the supermarket. And believe it or not, I saw this incredible uh, image. As you can see here, it was from Life Magazine, and I knew I had to paint it. So, so this way, you guys would enjoy it, and uh, we can learn together. So that makes me feel good. That you know, it's important that we learn together. So I have chat connected over at Facebook, YouTube, and I have it connected over. And let me just lower the volume here. We are in good shape, guys. Okay, so I have my custom Micron CM-C Plus fired up and ready to go. So it is one o'clock in the morning, one twelve actually, and it's on a uh, Monday morning. Everyone thinks it's, I feel it's Sunday, Sunday night, but it's pretty cool. So I have my mixture here, which is two full eyedroppers two full eyedroppers of water to okay no this is a little bit lighter so it's three of these eyedroppers of water and then two drops of India ink so with that ratio I did nine and six nine eyedroppers of water to six eye six drops of the waterproof India ink. The waterproof India ink that I'm using is Higgins waterproof India ink. So I have all the chat windows open. So we are ready when you are to talk about airbrush. So as you can see, I am going to start with my darkest darks. And the good thing about working with the Higgins Waterproof India ink is that it is, it does not uh, hold the pencil in place 
and I'm actually able to go ahead and erase the pencil after I put the ink in. And that's really revolutionary. For those uh, seasoned airbrush artists out there, you know what a pain that is when the pencil lines are underneath the paint and you cannot erase them anymore and they become part of your artwork. It's pretty funny that every single live stream that I do has its own personality. Just like the people who join the live stream. As you can see, I'm just working on the darkest darks right now. I'm not going super dark. And those of you who know me know that we go very, very slowly from light to dark. This is basically black, black color here. But I'm going in with this very light tone. Look and see what kind of tone I get when I put in the airbrush. Look at that, that's really light. That's not even a mid-tone. It's like a transition tone between the mid-tone and let's say uh, the light light. And just keep following me and you'll learn these terminologies and you will get very adept on identifying tone, identifying value, and so just stick with me, be consistent. When I have live streams, make sure you're there. When I have videos, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll learn, plain and simple. But I'm not giving away the whole store in one live stream. I need commitment from you guys as well. So right now I'm just making sure I get this shape correct so when I erase it I am not going to lose the really tight drawing that I did. See it got a little wet you got to be careful. This is on vellum, Bristol vellum. So I can't stay in one place airbrushing too long because it has no absorbency. It's going to start building up on the surface and then you're going to get a type of spidering. If not spidering, you'll just get a, like a little tiny little puddle of uh, ink and then it'll start to move around as you uh, blow with the airbrush on top of it. So surprising nobody's here yet, that's okay. Maybe people are just sleeping. Maybe they had a rough weekend. We got such a long way to go. This is just the very beginning, guys. The tip tip of the iceberg. And what you also want to do is you want to make sure you wipe this clean because as you're painting, putting the paint on there, it collects on here. So you might not realize it, then you move it to another area and then the ink or paint that's on there is going to reposition itself and make your artwork a problem.
because you're going to have to fix that now. Not only worrying, no more just worrying about creating a really nice painting. Now you got to worry about fixing that problem, that mistake. So be careful not to oversaturate. If you can see here, let me see if you can see. Uh, no, you probably can't, but it is wet. So you would have to clean that off with a paper towel. I'll show you real quick. If I can illustrate what I'm saying. See that? That was on there. So if I was going to go ahead and say, oh yeah, I'll go here. Psh everything's fine and I look back the, the ink that was there is going to be there that's not going to be fun so let us continue so whenever I continue I'll just take this and just make sure there's no tip dry in my fingernails make sure there's no paint or in this case ink dried ink which is called tip dry and of course I just check to make sure that the brush is acting the way I want it to. Typical problem could be when you put down the trigger and the trigger stays down after because it sort of gets stuck here, especially in older airbrushes. Seems like the Iwanas, that's a problem. I don't know if they're doing anything to fix that, but I think they should. And that little nasty lube stuff isn't exactly the answer that's for sure so you just got to clean it when like when I first started tonight to begin this it uh, begin the uh, airbrush portion the trigger was stuck so when I put the trigger down it would continue letting out air for let's say a half a second I don't want to get too wet there, it's already wet, but I want a puddle of, of tone, a puddle of ink, and then it starts spreading and then spidering out. So those are things we watch out for. Go ahead and get a nice hard edge on here. I got that nice hard edge. Oh, let me take away this because the live stream is already happening. Uh, so let me go on Facebook. I forgot to do that. I did not unlock it on Facebook. So for a second, you guys are going to hear a little bit of a double. A little bit of an echo. So I unlocked it on Facebook, and now Facebook people will come by. Hopefully. Not there's any YouTube people here, but hopefully Facebook people will come by. Still nobody. Now 
Now I'm going to be coming in much darker, but right now is the first initial pass. So we're going to be working from light to dark, meaning I'm in no rush to get dark, dark, okay? It's not like, you know, I need to get dark really fast, so... Okay, let's work on Martin's eyes. Remember, we can't stay in one area too long because we will get that spidering. So we gotta move around. I can't even shoot in one area long because then the water is gonna beat up. The ink is, especially this watery ink is gonna build up on the surface real fast. Everything looks really dark right now, but everything's really light. It's just that it's next to a white piece of paper. It's called uh, simultaneous contrast. Simultaneous contrast says that next to white, even gray looks black. So remember that. I do not want to paint my table. So I am going to put this underneath while I go ahead and extend the value here. Like I said, this is a very light value, but it looks dark, but it's just establishing the shapes. Why this is darker is because it's graphite underneath. When I remove the graphite, you're gonna see how light it is. Further away is going to be a wider stream of air. But remember, we do not want to go crazy with this ink. It's very wet on a slick surface. Bad combination if you are not paying attention. I do have a lot of, I, I always go ahead and tape these. So there is a lot of information that will be on the web pretty soon. I'm gonna leave this on YouTube so you'll be able to see it, the live version. But also, I believe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and leave the, and do a edited version Okay, I see a problem with this drawing here, so I'm going to fix it. I'm not too afraid to fix the drawing, if I can, at any stage. Sometimes it's, you can't, so you got to live with it. That's why diligent drawing is so important, but Hey, we're people. We make mistakes. But you might be further along in the painting and then the drawing. You have to live with the drawing, as I said before. See how the color will start moving. 
let me go ahead and uh, see if I can blow this up just a little bit. And what I can do is I want to maintain the shape of his nostril but still do the dark that's over here. Excuse me. Itch in my ear. It's just as important to take your time to find the shape that you're going to be using with that freehand shield than actually how you apply the paint on the surface. You see that I kept that nice shape here. So you see, you have to be diligent because it might not be this side that you want to do the edge with, but it might be this side. So you really got to think, think out. So let me see if I can get a different freehand shield. I think I have another one in my drawer here, if I am not mistaken. Here's a good one. Let's see what this does. So we kind of need a concave area right here. So I'm going to be very careful to not spray the other area. See that and I guess I'm just going to crawl it along. See that? If you crawl it along. Hey Joe, how you doing man? Good to see ya. Wow, very cool. Oh well, thanks for stopping by, man. Whatever you, whatever you can uh, stick around. Glad to have you. How's life in Vegas? And as you can see, what I'm doing is uh, just crawling along this edge here, so I could get a nice hard edge you don't want to cross the angles because that would cause a problem as you can see I'm taking my sweet time there's no rush you don't get any points for getting it done quicker ah glad to hear that Joe definitely definitely glad to hear that sir So it's a little earlier over there. So right now it's kind of like, uh, what, three hours different. So it's like, what, 10.30 over there by you, Joe? And if you're busy doing other things, don't worry about answering. So 
See how I just crawl along where the contour is to just follow that along. So I'm working on vellum, Bristol vellum. And so I got to be very careful not to overload the surface. I'll get dark when I get dark. There's absolutely no rush. Just basically establishing the darkest dark areas and then just gradually making everything darker as I go along. But what I want to do, Joe, is I, uh, yes, so I'm spraying the Higgins Waterproof India ink and that's usually my ink of choice when it's when I'm working just black and white. It, because it actually will erase after I put the ink down. It erase the pencil underneath so I don't have to worry about that. And then with the custom micron, it's just not fair how easy it is. It's like working with a pencil. If I was working with, working on board, I would be using uh, frisket film all over the place. But these are my little practice sketchbook airbrush paintings. I enjoy doing them, people like them, you know? Basically just exercise. And just, you know, as you can see, I'm moving around. At this stage, I don't want to stay in one area. I want to make sure that I give the whole painting my attention. And then I can go ahead and work in little areas, but at least I'll start to be able to make relative decisions. Decisions of relativity. Okay, so I have some darks to do over here, so I don't want these darks to extend into this light area of his wrist. So I am going to definitely do a freehand shield here, and I'm going to take care of that. And now I let the compressor go. I have this edge of his chin. I'm going to make sure I hit that correctly. Because that hard edge is really important to the believability of this image. See that? So now 
I already established some nice edge work here. It's interesting, you can do things with the simplest of, of uh, medium. Ink is very simple, but you can do some really nice things. Here I'm not going to be so, so careful because this is going to be dark here, black. And so I can pretty much be a little more liberal with going over the edge here. Be careful that you don't get too wet too early or you don't stay in one area. You don't have to be too careful with the shapes because you can erase this. Not aggressive eraser. You could use a mono eraser. Much like this one. Very easily erase that. This one as well. Also I'm working flat so this is very important the top and if you're working Eclipse make sure that you turn the cup so you don't spill your ink or paint on the surface. Never forgetting your edge work. Keep that edge work beautiful. Paying attention where there are hard edges. Make sure you're diligent about it and keep those edges. So I'm going to establish some of the mid-tones here. And then I'm going to go back with those darkest darks and go over them one more time. So this is transparent ink. And so with transparency, as you know, as you go over it, each subsequent time it gets darker and darker. Oh, so Joe says here, does ink have any erasability? Incredible erasability. Uh, so yes. So I intend to erase the pencil and the pencil will come right up. That's the great thing about this technique, Joe. When I discovered it, I was like, no way, this can't be this easy. And it really is. It really erases perfectly. And I'll show you as I go further into this how this erases. It's sort of really great. Now even though I say, oh in this area I can go over a little bit, I can't stay in the same area more than a few seconds. Otherwise with this, the Bristol vellum, the ink will really start to beat up. 
so I'll come back to even it up but I'm just uh, laying in values so I could differentiate the darkest darks will eventually be black to the midtones which is like a number two or number three value and neither of those values are even close right now but I'm just hitting those midtones and then the darks again so I can make that differentiate so when I go in with the eraser it's really going to start to work Yeah, the ink, the, ink, the ink does erase. As you can see, I can go ahead and erase that ink. It erases pretty well. Uh, but the beauty of this really is the erasability of the pencil underneath. And you get some really nice uh, erasability with the ink too, which I really love. But that's not the real gold mine that I think I found with this. So as you can see, I'm reinforcing the darks. Making them darker so I can come in with the midtone and just work the whole painting together going from light to dark, meaning bringing it dark with subsequent layers of ink. And then I'm gonna lower my reduction as time goes on so I can really get those rich darks. Down the line, no rush. Okay, so now I'm just doing the darks. Now the reduction with this is for every two tiny drops of this eyedropper, I am doing three full eyedroppers of this. And that's the ratio I'm using. So it's pretty reduced pretty well. Quite well. And that's why you know, I'm working with a very watery, very light value. And then I'll add less water and put more ink as time goes on, as I'm building up the darks very slowly. Case in point, so right now I worked on, on these shapes, I can just very lightly get rid of those guiding pencil lines. So now I'm just stuck with the, the value, or left with the value, I should say, not stuck. It just makes for a much more smooth and almost looks like it was painted without being drawn at all, which I like.
So I really love the way that it just builds slowly. And you can sort of kill a hard edge, make it soft. So you have that ability. And as you just erase the pencil line of the contours, let's say of this hand, you're kind of just left with this, this beautiful beautiful edge here. Now the, the trick is also is you don't want to uh, erase the hard work you did in your drawing so you wait on that until it's time that you know that you have the correct value and also the correct shape so sometimes when you go ahead and you airbrush you think you hit the contour but you really didn't and then when you erase it then you lost all those that wonderful drawing that you did below to get everything correctly But I just love these nice edges that sort of come through with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on the contour of his hand here, which was one of the things that initially struck me to this image when I seen it in the supermarket last week. See, that's a case in point when it gets too wet. So you want to be very careful of that. And we got plenty of time to come in. There's a really dark color over there. So we got plenty of time to make that happen. The thing is, just we just can't get into a rush. It doesn't help matters. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to hit some of these darks in this hole. As always, make sure you don't stay in the same area for more than a fraction of a second. I always make sure that the paint's not coming out even after I stop pulling back. Uh, or the air, yeah. So if the paint's coming out, even if I'm not pulling back, that means there's something inside the nozzle, or I have tip drop. So either or, I gotta make sure I do that because if I'm pulling back and then I'm moving around and there's still ink coming out, then I'm gonna screw up my my painting. And I always gets a little cramped up sometimes, especially when you're working small, you know, you're, you're in there and
Always remember, you got plenty of time to get dark. So, no rush whatsoever. Okay, let's see if we can do some very quiet erasing. So far, I have to be happy with the progress. See how I'm erasing the ink, so we're not having any issues here. Erasing the pencil and not the ink because I'm using the kneaded eraser. I don't want to pull up the ink at this point. Also, I want to make sure you're not pulling up any important pencil lines. But it does look a little bit more like blotchy because the graphite was sort of obscuring what was dark enough and what wasn't. You see how much lighter it is in this area. There's some stubborn pencil lines, you just got to come in a little bit stronger with a mono eraser. Happens, get a little overzealous during the drawing stage. Bit. Got a little wet here. So you just got to erase anywhere where you see maybe that the ink might have started to stain the paper when it started to beat up. So you might have to erase some of the excess, excess tone that occurs when that happens and after it dries. And then, you know, you want to get rid of any of the stubborn pencil lines with the mono eraser. That's just fine. And then this is the tricky part in the eyes. Hey, Vladimir, how you doing, man? Good to see you. How's it going, sir?
So what time is it for you over there? Like seven in the morning? So as you can see, when I erase the pencil lines, I'm erasing some of that detail. So I'm being careful not to go too crazy with that erasing. Being real careful. And now I'm going to immediately come back in with the India ink and the custom micron. Kind of stab myself for a second. Like I said, you are going to move around, not stay in one place at one time, and we're going to go ahead. work up our darks. We shake this up a little bit. Sometimes the ink and the water separates and then it gets really too light and then it's just ineffective. Let me lower the pressure. That goes a long way without with the ability to add more if I lower the pressure. Because this ink is so thin. So right now I am actually I'm streaming on Twitch, Facebook, and I'm not sure what happened there. Looks like I had a little bit of a ink over there. Not sure what that was. Whatever caused that. I cannot pull back on this trigger much at all. I have the air pressure really low. Probably like 10 psi if that. You have to be really careful because it's not really accepting the water. 
except in the ink. I really got to make sure I don't get too wet. I'm just blowing some air on there to dry it up. Let's see if I have any more luck. A little bit darkening that eye. Same thing with that eye. Let's try this nostril. See how I have to Make sure I don't stay in one area. I definitely have to move fast. Ah, thank you so much, Vladimir. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm trying to work on the pressure, different experimentations, seeing how I can do. I want to I want to keep the atomization as much as possible but also I know I have to lower that pressure let me go ahead and darken this nostril here okay so now since I'm starting to establish some of these darkest darks here I can go ahead and uh, Erase a little bit and then reapply those those midtones. 8 a.m. That's nice. So you're starting your day. That's great, Vladimir. Good morning. Also looking where there's lost and found edges. Like his finger has an edge here, but then it disappears in the background over there. So making those those adjustments and see that it gets still gets too wet. Trick is to keep moving. Don't stay in one spot. Yes, you definitely have to, yeah, you got, that makes a big difference, it really does. Like in a case like this, if you're working on a very slick surface with a very reduced paint, then it makes the world of difference. But in a lot of different uh, aspects, you can live without it, but I don't think so when it comes to stuff like this, it really makes your life easier. I still can't pull back that much because it's very watery and it's going to spider and pull up very quickly. So I have to keep moving and it's not drying very fast because it has no absorbency, this paper. Sure, I move around. Let's dry that up a little bit. Just spray some air on that. I don't even know how long I've been on. Let's say 209. Yeah, I've been on an hour. So, getting a lot done on Martin here. Let's uh, work on some of this edge work here. And you want to crawl 
crawl the freehand shield along the contour. And you know where the edge starts and stops. So let's go ahead and make sure that's dry. You don't want to reposition wet paint. Oh, see we lost our YouTube chat. Let me get that back. Let's see, so YouTube chat, we seem to have lost you. Let's see. There we go, even though no one's on YouTube talking to us, at least <laughs> we know if they are, if they do, they can. Yes, exactly, Joe. The, uh, yes, the, uh, these guys. The, the Mac valves. They are really great. That's what Joe is, is referring to. And they're like only 30 bucks if you have an Iwata. And they do the same thing, except the valve is over here, except over there. So that's something to think about. Yeah, they work great, Joe. I agree. It's a little more difficult um, putting in backgrounds when you're working uh, on a regular paper because I can't just with frisket and get that really nice dark background hey Johnny good to see you man thanks for stopping by I'm gonna go ahead and just start to darken this a little bit bring his uh, bring Martin's face closer to us Definitely two routes I can go. Now I did lose the likeness a little bit when I erased. But that's okay, I'm gonna gain it right back. And I just wanna go ahead and clean up. It's still a little wet, so I gotta be careful. Like I said, this paper, this Bristol vellum does not uh, dry very quickly. It does not absorb at all. But, on the other hand, it doesn't warp. So, there's a trade-off. So, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I always like the spirit of experimentation. So, I'm gonna take the ink mixture that I'm using, and I'm gonna go ahead and maybe start using 
some paintbrush techniques because I'm not having a good time with that very reduced India ink. I think I can do much better with the brush. So I'm really happy what the brush does when you need it to do it. There's always the best tool for every job. And the airbrush is not the best tool for every job. I really like the hard edge I'm able to get with this. It's really making a difference and making me happy. It does wonders to even out those values. And you're going to constantly adjust your drawing here and there because like we say you know nobody is perfect and no matter how long you've been drawing you're going to make adjustments you're going to see things more clearly when you have the values in place So I'm using the same mixture that's in my custom micron right now. Pretty quiet tonight. It's all good, but I like to hear from you guys, as many of you as possible. So any of you guys ever uh, try and do some pastel work, working in pastel? I think you'll like it in the method that I'm teaching on my blog. It's very much like airbrush. It's funny, when I was working in pastels long before I even touched an airbrush, I was always accused of, when I was doing my pastel paintings, of being... Uh, and it, using airbrush and not telling anybody, so it was pretty cool. So if you ever need help, I can actually send that to you. Uh, you know, I can actually sell that to you and only charge you for shipping, Vladimir. 
If that will get to you, I'd be happy to do that. So let me know. I'd be more than happy to hook you up, Vlad. So I could purchase it here in the States and then I'll just send it to you. Ah, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, reading my blog. It's, uh, I really appreciate the support. Yeah, and it's this new technique. Actually, it's not this new technique. I've been working in this technique. It must be about 15 years now where I invented this new way of doing pastels. And it is so much like uh, airbrush in the manner that I use. It's so controlled. It's not that really chalky, messy kind of uh, airbrush art that you see. It's really pretty cool. Put it this way, people have a hard time deciphering my airbrush and my pastel paintings. So there's this really beautiful hard edge here and I want to hit that with the brush. Now my first instinct at this point uh, Definitely. No, I'm not going to make any money off of you on shipping. So I'll just charge you whatever the shipping costs for me. So I'll just get it out there for you, okay? It'd be my pleasure. So whatever it costs, uh, you know, and then I'll find out how much it would cost for shipping. I'll hook you up. So, so it'll come to me and then I'll send it on to you, Vlad. So make sure you get that. And that goes for anything that you want to get that you can't get in the States. I'll do that for you. You can trust me, man. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a little more erasing. Clean off that brush a little bit. And then, yes, we're gonna do a little more erasing here. Erase some of this, uh, some of these mid-tones, the pencil lines in the mid-tones, mind you. I'll go back in with that so I could revisit those mid-tones. Also, go ahead and get rid of some of those real stubborn pencil lines. And just make sure you don't erase pencil lines that are important for the drawing and likeness. So be careful when you're erasing these pencil lines, you don't erase the wrong ones. I mean, eventually you're gonna erase all the pencil lines, but definitely has to be done in the right time. Hmm. Go ahead and do a dusting. I want to bring this shirt forward. So I'm going to take this freehand shield. Actually, I want to take not the shirt, but the cuff on his shirt. And I'm just going to just dust some value here. See that? See how I bring that forward? And... So I, I think I like the way that came out. Just 
pushing that back. You know what it is? One of the reasons why a lot of these companies don't want to ship to Europe or certain countries. I used to work for Amazon is because they don't want to pay the duty uh, like they have to pay like customs costs and we don't have to pay customs costs uh, when I ship it personally to you. So that's where the money is saved. They got to worry about insurance and everything like that. So I just want to go ahead and hit this hard edge here. Just remind me as I'm working, as I'm getting darker, that I want to retain that hard edge. It's funny, I'm not thinking any differently when I'm drawing and whether I'm painting. I'm solving the same issues and I'm working in the same manner from light to dark. And I'm building up the darks as you can see in his eyes here. With each pass, it's getting a little bit darker. And I'm doing this before I actually go ahead and lower the reduction. I really love the way that's coming out. The airbrush does some things that no other medium can, without a doubt. So now that I erased, excuse me, I got a itch there. So now I went ahead and erased the edges of the dark. Now I can go ahead and redo those mid-tones. Load our air pressure just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and hit some of those mid-tones. Remembering that you do not want to stay in one area for long. I'm going to go back once I do these midtones. I'm going to lower the, uh, lower the reduction. And I'm going to start hitting these darks because it's going to take a long time if I go ahead and just keep doing layers of these transition tones. That's not what I want to do. It'd be too laborious and eventually it will damage the surface. So you got to worry about you know how you treat the surface. It's only so much you can take.
Oh yeah, they do have them as well, and, and they do ship to Europe, so that's a good idea. So if that helps, that would be great. As you can see, I'm able to begin modeling the forms. Still got so far to go, however, it's looking much better. Yeah, so if that's cheaper, definitely go that route. bit of his likeness over here in this eye but that's okay I'll just catch it up and I think I can see where that's happening a little bit there you go. remember moving around you don't want to stay in that one spot working on his hand here. Kind of get those wrinkles in his hands. We all have them. And I just love the humanity in this particular pose. Let's see if we can go ahead and do some refining. And the eye here.
you can see that it even erases uh, the ink actually erases very well And although it does get dark over here, we can go ahead and do some modeling in the white of his eye. And as I go ahead and darken these darks here, I'm going to get his likeness back. A lot of times you feel it's getting a little too wet, you can just spray some, spray some air on that, you know, without pulling back. And just bumping that trigger to get that sort of broken line. So I'm bumping the trigger, meaning I'm just going like back, 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 for back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. That's how I make sure that I get that sort of uh, gradated value. I'm going to do a light dusting over the whole thing. See that? And then I'll work in the highlights at the very end. We'll do a dusting over the hands. Sort of accelerating this a little bit. So as you can see guys, we're, we're doing a lot, but I'm in no rush. So I've been doing this now for, this live stream's been an hour and a half. I may go just a little longer. This way, a different view 
Let me stand up a little bit. Oh, my back. Okay. I'm just going to make sure I don't get too wet. Over here. There we go. I may just work on a portion of the next live stream, just working on his hands there. I know that's just part of his hands, but they're very expressive. So it's crucial to get that. Now remember, there's two wraps to go. I could go ahead and uh, reduce the re reduce the amount of water I put in the ink and get darker, or I can go ahead and just do one layer of the same reduction over and over again. But like I said, that comes at a cost with kind of beating up the surface. Go back to the other angle here. At the other angle, I can see your comments. See if anyone said anything. Nope. Okay. Cool. All right. So I do about two to three uh, live streams a week. So I do about two to three live streams a week, maybe even more, more like three or four. And the reason being is I want my live streams to be smooth. I want my live streams not to have issues. I want to do multiple cameras without having anybody helping me. That, that to me is, is really cool. I'm able to do stuff like that. How many guys out there are able to do that? I don't care what level they're at. They're going to have to learn how to catch up to me. So that's one of the reasons why I do so many live streams. Because when you do a lot of something, you get better. That's why I haven't been doing a lot of the recorded videos, you know, that editing, and I've sort of been uh, neglecting that a little bit, but I want to get to a certain level here before I get to that. I'm already at that level I feel in my edited videos on YouTube, so this is next level stuff for me, getting to that next level. Then I'll go ahead and I'll raise the uh, level of my YouTube channels and vice versa. Same thing with my blogs. You know, I can only raise a level of one thing at a time, you know, so that's what I have to uh, really work on. Wow, really? Thank you. Wow, that means a lot to me, Joe. Oh, that means the hard work is paying off. Very cool. I do a lot of homework, Joe, and uh, working on different cameras, how to make your your expensive DSLR, how to make that into a webcam so you could 
you know, go ahead and, you know, do stuff like, you know, like this, where you can really get in there and see detail. So stuff like that, you know, that's what I really, you know, work hard in doing so I could, so I can bring you guys something that is, you know, a little next level, a little bit of a next level. That's pretty cool. You know, I've been working long when I ran out of ink and I had that up pretty high. So that's pretty cool. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and maybe start lowering my reduction. So with this, I did 9 and 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in three more drops in my mixture here so this way I'll make it equally which will be 9 and 9 and I have this here which tells me what the equal mixture would look like 3 and 3 would be this here I was working pretty much over here but I'm gonna do maybe 3 and 4 so let me make it a little bit darker So since I did 9 and 6, so that would be 3, and so that would be 3 and 12, so I'm going to do six more, drop, or six more drops in here. I did set some ink out when I put it in the airbrush, so I'm going to put 3 more in there. 1, 2, 3. Add one more anyway. Whoop. One more. Mix that up really well. And then put that back in the airbrush, fry it, fire it up, and see how much darker the values have gotten. So I spent the last year pretty much working full time on YouTube and Facebook and just trying to take it up that extra notch and you know putting money in it getting some really good camera equipment okay now look see we got a nice dark value here we're gonna darken every this is going to lighten everything once I apply this dark here Again, just got to keep moving. Keep looking at that edge. The typography of how that edge sort of plays with the edge of the mid-tone. And I'm pulling back real real slightly definitely don't want to don't want to at all oversaturate sort of like a chess game guys you know you gotta play several moves ahead And you can get darker on the second pass, so don't worry about it if it's not dark. But definitely don't don't go over it more than once. Because that's when you'll get too wet and do weird things. But you see how when I come in with this darker, darker value, re reducing the water a lot less, 
all of a sudden you see everything else just sort of lighten to where it just doesn't look right then you got to catch up the values here on his wrist see that that's you want that wrist to come forward Pull that up right here. See so yeah, how we can just crawl that over, which is really good in gaining that edge. Now if you see it getting a little too wet, you can go ahead and dry that up with air. Now I'm on Twitch at the same time, but I'm not getting any attention there. Twitch takes a while to catch on, and when you do it can be very good for your channel. see that hand starting to move forward which is really nice areas I think for some reason seem to beat up a little bit more see if we can go ahead and see the eyes I'm gonna stick I'm definitely gonna stick with the uh, brushwork with the eyes because just it's just not a, it's not accepting the, the airbrush ink for whatever reason. Listen to the surface, right? Whatever the surface is telling you. Okay. 
You can't bend it to your will. Okay, so let's see if we can go ahead and start getting some of that really nice edge work here. Okay, so now you can see at this angle what I'm trying to do. Okay, so you can see that I'm maintaining the edges as I'm darkening around. And this is tricky, so you gotta take your time. And you can see that the hard work on getting this edge is paying off because he's starting to glow a little bit. Okay, so for the first day, I have to say I'm pretty happy with how Martin is coming out. Before I go, this is all going to be very wet. So let's go ahead and just uh, blow this a little bit. Dry. Let me go turn down that air. It's kind of freezing here. Be right back. Turn off the air. Oof. Wow, that was cold. Ugh. Okay. So, okay, so we're at the point we are going to go ahead and do some final erasing for the day. So, some pencil marks here. right along here now I'm gonna keep going darker until this is black the background so as you can see the direction I'm going that I still even though it looks dark I still have several values to go then it's really gonna pop the lights are really gonna pop out
And as you can see, little by little, um, regaining any lost, any kind of lost likeness from from erasing the pencil lines. And I also am going to come in with my secret weapon, which is going to be white pastel. And that's really going to make things look fantastic. Get those highlights. So I'm really happy with, you know, how it's coming out uh, little by little, I'm getting there. But, so going from the mid-tones where I put the darkest darks and then darken that a little bit, doing the mid-tones after that, then then uh, going darker with the darkest darks, then darkening the mid-tones. So you see how I darken things together. Now this is only how I work when I'm working with inks. And I work transparently. Now I don't work transparently when I'm working in color when I'm doing, you know, acrylic, then I work opaque. I do this for my underpaintings, of course. But as you can see, little by little, we are, we're getting to where we want to go. And we're just building up from light to dark. Not from our lights, I mean, not from our lightest lights to our dark, but working light and going darker as we go. Oh my God, it's three o'clock. Yeah, so this is definitely time to wrap this up, guys. So I appreciate taking time out of your busy day to hang out with me and talk a little bit about art. We got a long way to go with this, but I have to say, I'm happy thus far. Oh man, thanks Joe, I really appreciate it. No, it was my pleasure, my friend, and uh, always great to hang out with you guys. Vladimir, if you're out there, I hope you uh, have a great night as well. Hope to see you guys soon. So this is uh, basically it for tonight, but not too bad. So we got a lot done. So have a great Monday, guys. And hey john how you doing man thank you so much for coming around and hanging out with me i hope i hope you caught some of this but don't worry it's still going to be uh recorded on youtube and facebook so you'll still be able to see it in its entire it'll just take a while for it to load on there so that's cool so john i hope to see you again vlad joe you guys have a great night guys take care of yourselves